When I first arrived in Moldova, I received a message on Couchsurfing.org, a social network site for travelers. The message's subject was nowhere. Write me if you are around this weekend, the message read. I live in a country that doesn't exist. This was my first invitation to the breakaway territory, Transnistria. Transnistria is a de facto state that uh, is arguably part of Moldova that exists on its own, is totally independent of most Moldova institutions, um, has its own money, has its own stamps, has its own president, government, um, military. This is Matt, a Fulbright research student. He first went to Transnistria two years ago and has returned many times since. Basically, uh, it is an non-recognized yet independent state. About 20 years ago, there was a lot of big issues going on with Moldova and the Russian speakers in that area. And uh, the Transnistrians decided to secede. And so uh, war at first broke up around the town of Dubasari, and then it broke up big time in Benderi. Almost 1,000 people died in the War of Transnistria, which ended with a ceasefire in July of 1992. Today, Transnistria is considered one of Europe's frozen conflicts. In order to cross the border, what you have to do is you have to, the, the car f pulls up, um, you get on a bus, usually it's like a mashrutka, you know, pulls up to the border, and then a border guard comes on, he collects the passports, and then um, takes your passport, registers you in the computer. Then when you get your passport back, you have to go up to this um, little office, and you need to have already filled out a little migration card. You hand the migration card to them, they rip it off, um, and, you know, they keep one part of it and they give you the back. other part, they write something on it, stamp it. And then within 24 hours, if you're going to stay there for more than, 20, more than 10 hours, you need to go to what they call the passport table um, in uh, Transnistria, and you have to go and get registered. Transnistria has a reputation for corruption. The internet is full of stories of tourists who were forced to pay bribes to police. The U.S. Department of State website warns that a separatist regime controls the Transnistria region east of the Dniester River. Be careful when visiting or crossing Transnistria, since the U.S. Embassy may not be able to help you if you encounter difficulties. I was worried if I went, I would get in trouble and never see my parents again. So, I decided to bring them with me. Transnistria. With the Transnistria, which is sort of... Transnistria. Transnistria. We had never heard of Transnistria before, that there's this almost independent country right here, kind of part of Moldova, but also considers themselves separate from Moldova. Never heard of it. I was a little nervous because I didn't really know what to expect. You know, everything we'd heard uh, about the country was uh, sort of bleak and foreboding, but it turned out very different. You know, I like the fact that they took the wedding photos in front of things like a tank which had supposedly been used to fight off the Moldovans in their struggle for independence. I also like the giant, giant, really big statue of Lenin. Transnistria, also known as the PMR, is full of Soviet symbols, which leads many to believe that the de facto state hasn't strayed from its communist past. No, no, no. The PMR is not communist. In the PMR, I would say this is the first stadium to my mind, the first stadium of uh, capitalism. This is Andre. He lives in Transnistria. We have uh, market relations. We have uh, very strong company, companies here. Pretty much the whole country is owned by this store called Sharif. Sharif has built a giant stadium. They own all the supermarkets. They own the telephone lines, they own the gas lines, um, petrol stations are all Sharif. They own the TV station, they own the banks. What Sharif doesn't own, Gazprom Bank owns. Um, so from Russia's oil giant Gazprom. It's impossible to talk about Transnistria without mentioning Russia. Russian troops played an important role in the war with Transnistria. Russian peacekeepers remain there. And Russia has provided political and economic support to Transnistria. 2006, there was a referendum 
about the future of Pridnestrovia. More than 97% uh, wanted that Pridnestrovia would be independent and in the future maybe one of the subjects of Russian Federation. When American Vice President Joseph Biden visited Moldova in March, he expressed a different opinion. Transnistria's future lies inside Moldova, within, within the community of Europe. The people of Moldova deserve an end to a dispute that has divided this great country for far too long.